So I'll go ahead and introduce uh, our penultimate speaker. It's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Steve Miller. He is a business and life sciences executive and who's currently serving as the CEO of Sandia Biotech, which is a biotechnology company rapidly advancing to becoming a, a leader in cancer diagnostics and it's the therapeutics company as well. Steve specializes in program and project management of complex scientific partnerships. He's skilled in advancing a technology into profitable alliances and assisting in negotiating research, partnership and license agreements. At Nano Diagnostics, as program manager, he led the strategic planning process for the medical device development of a point of care diagnostics platform, served as a project leader under the quality management system, managed the internal and external medical device development activities, deliverables, timelines and coordination with clinical programs. And he's here today to talk about illuminating disease with novel, novel fluoro bodies and leading edge imaging. Thank you very much, Steve, and I'll hand it over to you. All right, very good. Can everybody see the first slide? Yes. Yes. All right, very good. Well, I'd like to begin by uh, thanking Sherry Monroe, the Director of Marketing. Um, it's been really quite a a journey, this two-day journey into the world of drug discovery and preclinical development. Um, I happen to like journeys, so I thought I'd take you on another journey, and that is the journey of a, a startup called Sandio Biotech. I became aware of Sandio Biotech a number of years ago, but when I left the last opportunity to be a contributor in the business world, I decided that I would never be under another leader. I would only come into the business world as a CEO. I looked at Sandio Biotech and I saw something that I was incredibly excited about. And so I met with the team in August and my excitement grew. I met with the angel investor, Jerry Landgraf, and I met with the CEO and president, Tony Pino, and my excitement grew. I, uh, I negotiated a deal to become their CEO and to own a percentage of the, the company. And I took a deep dive into a startup and I looked at the cap table. I looked at the business. I looked at profit and loss. I looked at balance sheet. And what I'd like to share with you as a company, a startup is not reflected in its balance sheet. It's reflected in the people and the purpose. Thanksgiving of last year, I had the incredible opportunity to go to Jamaica with uh, my dear wife, Diane's youngest daughter, Gina, Andrew, her husband, young boy, 13, Jack, and Sophia, 15. And we, in the time of COVID, we went to Jamaica and we celebrated in a family together and we had a Thanksgiving. We stayed at a penthouse. We swam in the ocean. We swam with horses. We went to uh, Mystic Mountain and we did the bobsled run. Why am I sharing this? Because what that told me is that if your purpose and your alignment with nothing but the good on the planet and nothing else really matters. And COVID-19 is just another thing that I look at and say, many things I do not understand. But I choose to be happy and I choose to live life fully. And I know the joy in my heart is not dependent on anything else except the choices that I make. So I want to take you on a journey. And you look at the picture in front of you. You're looking at a lagoon in Jamaica filled with dinoflagellates, and the grandchildren wanted to make Doc happy. They call me Doc, and my wife is Nana. They jumped in and, the water, and it turned blue, high luminescence light. Go ahead. And, and Dr. Steve, I think your slide is still, uh, for us, stuck on the first uh, intro slide deck. And that is correct. I'm... Uh, I'm doing this in a way to uh, introduce a much larger picture. So the Bioluminescence Lagoon is meant to celebrate the products of nature, uh, products that produce or modify light. It's very pretty. 
but it actually means something. And that is that the products of nature can be modified and Sandia biotech what's, makes what's called fluorobodies, recombinant antibodies linked to fluorescent proteins. So the second slide is our mission. So looking at the company, being able to realign a company and allow it to grow into something much larger than it started as, started in Thanksgiving and giving thanks with a family incredibly happy to be together. So Sandia, Sandia Biotech is, is a family. It's a large family of people. But as you'll see today, it's a family much larger than just one company. We're driven by a single mission to make Sandia Biotech a leading cancer diagnostic and therapeutics company. We believe that any venture is anchored in one's absolute alignment to purpose. Be impeccable with your word. Don't take anything personally. Don't make assumptions. Always do your best. These words come from a book called The Four Agreements. I encourage you to read it. You'll see how these words play out in today's talk. The entire team at Sandia Biotech is committed to this mission and living these core values. We have other companies that are aligned with this mission. What if you had a mission to actually detect cancer in blood in years zero to one, and other people actually believe that you could do it, and you will not be stopped? The National Cancer Institute, I'm a reviewer for SBIR contracts. They have a hashtag out on LinkedIn, nothing will stop us. We are also aligned with nothing will stop us when it comes to cancer diagnostics. Companies are made of people. The people are aligned all with the mission of being able to do things better than what we do today. Axiom Optics is the U.S. distributor for Confocal, the Dutch microscopy company. Cybista is a state-of-the-art virtual reality company I'll tell you about today. Spirochrome is live cell reagents for staining cells in living conditions and seeing living cell biology. Live cell microscopy, live cell nanoscopy. Protein fluidics is uh, led by Evan Cromwell, a dear friend. And it's technology in multi-well plates for being able to control the fluidics for reagents to stain what are called organoids or spheroids or tumoroids in an automated way and take it into imaging platforms such as confocal. Edaluma is a, a uh, advanced digital microscope platform led by Chris Shoemake, the CEO. Fluid analytics is a technology platform for being able to do on rates and binding constants all in serum and blood. Biofluidics is a state-of-the-art fluid dispense technology. Techmatic is the U.S. Distrib distributor for biofluidics, and I'm pleased to introduce Simix Health. They're a point-of-care diagnostics company that we're working with to advance a point-of-care diagnostics platform for cancer using blood. Today, we're going to focus on Confocal, Cyvista, and Spirochrome. So there are critical challenges to solve when you look at the antibody. If you listen to Clayton Moore's talk from Rapid Novar, he did an excellent job of describing all the challenges with antibodies. And if you didn't hear his talk, you need to listen to it because he describes all the challenges with antibodies in a way much better than I could. All the irreproducible data, all the antibodies that never turned out to be useful for biomarkers for cancer. All the lost years of graduate students and postdocs. And yes, I'm one. And if you think that I am frustrated with some things that are available in the marketplace, you're correct. Lost years, graduate students, postdocs, because of bad antibodies, lack of quality control. We will change that. What are the challenges with antibodies? They're bivalent. The FC region is responsible for nonspecific binding. Additional steps or chemistries are required to label with fluorochromes. These batch-to-batch -batch differences in fluorochrome-labeled antibodies adds to quality control challenges that are actually significant when you run a medical diagnostics applications program, and I have done that. We can do much better, and we are. Fluorobodies, another way of looking at an antibody, you really don't care about the whole antibody. All you care about is the variable and the variable light chain, the regions that actually interact with the antigen. You care about that region. If you hook it up to a fluorescent protein, 
you have something that is one third size of a conventional antibody with the same specificity of the antibody, and I'm asking you to join the revolution. It's a revolution because you got to change the mindsets, you got to change the people that are buying reagents, and you got to look at things from a brand new day. And if you haven't learned anything from today's talk and yesterday's talk, is the old way of thinking is too old. You need to look at things from a brand new day, and I celebrate the brand new day, so look at things from flora bodies. It is a revolution, and I encourage you to join us. It's small size, no FC region, inherently fluorescent, quantitative, no cross-linking of receptor. Multiple colors are available because we have multiple fluorescent proteins. We have an efficient production in bacteria, so our cost of goods allow us to work with instrument manufacturers and lower the cost so that we can go into third world. Yes, we can lower the cost of goods in such a way that we can enable instrumentation for Africa, India, third world countries, and we are doing so. Floor body production timeline is an art. If you look at it from two to three months with hybridoma, looking at what's possible with rapid Novar and mass spec and being able to do things with state-of-the-art technology. We will not do hybridomas anymore because we'll work directly with proteins. We work with DNA sequence or the amino acid sequence. We clone, we sequence, we produce libraries. Most importantly, our reagents go through quality control. They're fluorescent, so they work with all fluorescence assays. You can do immunofluorescence microscopy, flow cytometry. But you compare them directly against a fluorochrome labeled antibodies and you produce data that shows that our reagents are, yes, much better, lower nonspecifics, higher specificity, and you package and get them ready for shipping and that's what we're doing. Efficient flora body production is shown here. So a library, can we, you know, we've got glycerol stocks, grow it up in three days. The critical part of this is flora body design. We turn this into a completely controlled system ready for large scale production. Flora body design, linker design, all the things important we have mastered and turned into an art. If you look at the flora bodies that we have, we do them in three colors, cerulean, red fluorescent protein, but look at the one in the middle. It's super folder green fluorescent protein. I'm gonna focus on that because it's not your typical green fluorescent protein. So in summary, we can take a library and have a product ready for you in three days and we can scale it and we can produce it at cost of goods that nobody else can. If we start with a DNA sequence, an amino acid sequence, it takes two to three weeks. With state of the art automation, we can do that in a week. Forget about hybridoma because we're going to forget about it. Superfolder GFP is the middle. Why do we call it Superfolder? It comes from Los Alamos National Labs. We have a license to it and we can commercialize it and sell it. We have vectors for it in bacteria and mammalian. The picture shows that this is capable of binding to its target in Thermopolis at 80 degrees centigrade. Yes, this is not your typical green fluorescent protein. You can use it as a superfolder. It's actually a reagent that you can use to actually tell you whether your protein is folding correctly or not. It folds five times faster than other fluorescent proteins. If you put it on the end terminus, it's immune to folding from challenges. Ferritin is a great example of a protein that's difficult to fold. If you put it on the C terminus, the picture that you're looking at in the dark boxes below the bright ones shows you that we don't see a good signal. It's because it doesn't fold. The fluorescent protein does not show fluorescence. And you have a beautiful signal that tells you whether or not you have a recombinant protein folded or not. Los Alamos National Labs has advanced this. This is used by industry. It is a very powerful tool. We offer it in three colors, CFP, cerulean, green, and yellow fluorescent protein. We are moving forward to get it in a red fluorescent protein. Again, this comes from Los Alamos National Labs and we have a license to it. We can also use Superfolder as a split GFP. Very simply, if you take a peptide from the barrel, it goes dark. You can attach that peptide to any protein of interest. 
And now you have a universal reporter when the barrel without the peptide comes in and binds to that peptide, you get fluorescence complementation. This is an exquisite assay. You can put the barrel out on the surface of the cell, you can express it, and you can add the peptide just as a protein, and you will see the surface light up for any protein of interest you tag. You can put the peptide out there, and the peptide is so small, it's a beautiful tag for being able to put inside the cell and look for new protein-protein interactions. Cut and glow, you can do protease detection. We have a constrained peptide held within a rigid structure. You cut it, it springs open, and it recombines to produce the fluorescence complementation. We call it cut and glow. It's been demonstrated with HIV protease caspase. The other ones are all demonstrated with the protease and caspase are the ones that sell. DNA damage caspase, HIV protease. Any, H, any protease site can be engineered into this can be engineered to work inside living cells. Gper is a product line, G protein estrogen receptor. We are an exclusive supplier for G1 agonists, G15 antagonists, and G36 antagonists. There's a lot that can be done with this reagent, and you're gonna see Sandia Biotech take a leading role because the literature is full of studies using breast cancer cell lines that is just a mess. And it's a mess because cell lines evolve over time, and we all know this. The cell line in lab A and the cell line in lab B are not the same, and the signaling pathways are not the same, and they can't reproduce each other. And yes, I have been involved in those kind of studies. That's why you need to go quicker to the patient and biopsies. Cell lines are great to practice with, but I happen to be tired of practicing. Breast cancer, anti proliferative activities are blocked by G1, if the cell line is correct. G1 has been used for melanoma. Now remember, this is a transmembrane domain receptor that mediates non-genomic estrogen-related signaling. And it triggers multiple downstream pathways. So I encourage you to buy these reagents. You can go to sandiobio.com. Start to look at what we understand and then see what you see with your own research program. I think you might be surprised. It inhibits cell growth, cell migration, program cell death in a variety of tissues. It's involved in a progression of a multiple cancers, and today we realize that this is an important signaling pathway that may lead to novel therapeutic targets, especially among estrogen-related cancers. And remember, breast cancer is one of those targets. So the reagents can be used for flow cytometry. They're immunophenotyping reagents, but they're much better than any of your fluorochrome labeled antibodies. You do the typical labeling with a fluorochrome labeled antibody and you'll be working at 10 micrograms per mil. You work with our reagents and you're in the nanograms per mil. Why? Because there are no nonspecifics, incredibly low nonspecifics. CD3ED superfolder GFP is shown here. Standard flow cytometry. You look over on the right, you're looking at the gated population. We're looking at 73%. These are peripheral blood fixed cells. The number of CD3 positive cells is exactly that, 73%. We have CD3E, we have CD4, we have CD20, we have CD45. We have integrins that are all looked at in development, and we have a CD49 all ready to go. Talk to me if you want to do immunophenotyping reagents. None of these are listed on our website at this time because we're doing highly controlled comparative studies. We can do target of interest in live cells. We can look at DNA, histone, and tubulin. We can use bacteria toxins to permeabilize cells. We can throw in our flora bodies. We can incubate. An antibody won't get through. The pore size is too small. This has been shown in a publication that I'm showing here. This particular floor body binds specifically to single double-stranded supercoiled DNA, and you can see how beautiful the signal is. Antiephedrine A2 cerulean, epithelial human breast cancer cells. If you look at the top panel in the unstimulated, Stimulation is what's called efferin. Efferin is a dimeric protein. Efferin is involved in the tissue architecture of how epithelial cells organize in normal tissue. 
If you look at the top right, you see a diffuse staining pattern. If you look at the bottom, the top is a primary and secondary antibody labeled with Alexafluor 48. The diffuse stain pattern is due to the diffusion. No, it's due to a antibody that has nonspecifics. It binds to other sites. If you look at the binding on the lower right, you're seeing an efferent stimulated with just an efferent A2 cerulean fluorobody. Notice how punctate, how sharp the signal is. These reagents are much better than fluorochrome labeled antibodies. And they can be used in the diagnosis of breast cancer. Efferin A2 is overexpressed in 60 to 80% of breast cancers and used in the diagnosis of triple negative breast cancer. We can take small molecules such as folic acid receptor and turn those into fluorobodies. There's a lot of things we can do with folic acid receptor. Stay tuned and watch San Diego Biotech and we'll show you. Cancer biomarkers ready now. Notice that these are all designed for breast cancer. Herceptin, ERBB2, ERBB3, ERBB4, ephedrin A2, and anti-EGFR. These are all available for sale now on our website, sandiabio.com. We're going to drill down and look at the Herceptin, anti her 2 And remember, these are important biomarkers because one in eight women will develop breast cancer in their lifetime. And I don't know about you, but I don't like these numbers. The perfect handshake. So we took Genetex Transtuzumab. It's known as Herceptin, trademarked. And all we did was take the variable light chain, the variable heavy chain, combine them into what's called a single chain variable fragment. We use linkers. Those linkers are critical for being able to get things to recombine. We have a perfect handshake. You can see how things look from Chimera using PDB files and looking at protein structures. But we can also do this in virtual reality. I'm not going to show you that today, but we are doing that. Red fluorescent protein excitation emission is shown. Excite with a green, yellow laser measure red emission. So anti-HER2 red fluorescent protein, if you look at it, normal breast tissue paraffin embedded tissue samples. HER2 positive breast tumor shows you exactly that you want to see from a diagnostic. But with our reagent, you don't just see HER2 positive, the biomarker on the cell surface. You also see nuclear staining. And today we know that HER2 biomarker is in the nucleus of the cells. If you don't know that, look in the literature. We know that. Anti-HER2 red fluorescent protein fixed HER2 positive breast cancer cells. They're staying with uh, a nuclear stain. You're seeing kind of a fuzzy image. You're seeing bright spots. That's what happens when you look at fixed cells and you look at it using a 63X oil objective. You see a diffuse image. There's not a lot of thing other than, oh, yeah, it's stained. It's, it's okay. But what if we could do things better? What if we could move to live cell imaging with the right technologies? And what if we could learn more? What if we could produce biologic relevant results that actually taught us something, that actually made us understand cell biology a little bit better? See, I happen to believe that understanding and advancing technology and science is really what makes all this fun, as opposed to just doing something for the, you know, oh, somebody told me to do it. What if you could make things really fun? Got to go back one. So Confocal is a uh, Dutch, Dutch microscopy company that has advanced the Confocal technology using what's called rescan Confocal microscopy. One way to describe this is think of a scan head, a digital scan head. The first one was analog, but now we're digital. And think of the first scan head as a read. So read the information from the cells. And think of the second scan head as write. Write the information to a CMOS chip, not to a PMT, but actually to a chip. Standard confocal is, is 240 nanometers in resolution. RCM2 achieves 170 nanometers because of their design. 
With deep convolution software, we can get to 120 nanometers. We can use low laser power. That means no phototoxicity. That means your cells actually do not show the blibbing and problems due to high laser power. If you use ultraviolet lasers and DAPI dyes, you damage cells. If you hit them with blue, you're hitting with higher energy. If you move to red, if you move to greens and yellows, you have less energy. The cells behave different, so the technology is robust, easy to use, software, versatile, and you can upgrade any existing research microscope, but the RCM2 has been optimized with an Olympus microscope with a laser combining technology, and the thing is packaged in an absolutely brilliant platform. The orange box is the laser scan head. So the benefits, now we can go to a field of view. That's your typical field of view on the left, but using a brand new objective that Olympus had, has advanced using Confocal as a leading company to pay attention to, we have bigger optics, a 40X with 1.4 numerical aperture. So now we have high content imaging that's truly high content because we have more pixels, more data to process. And yes, we can get much more information out of this. Spirochrome probes for bioimaging. They're a Swiss company. If you look at the history and their published work, you see that they have reagents called silicon rhodamine. They took small molecules like docetexel that binds to tubulins and attached it to their silicon rhodamine. And they created tubulin-specific reagents, actin-specific reagents. These guys are brilliant. They're illuminating cells in ways. And, yeah, I'll show you something that's really quite striking. The spirochrome live cell and snap tag reagents, they allow us, this is open source, we can attach a benzyl guanine fluorochrome directly to a particular enzyme that is self-labeling. This can be done for any target inside a living cell. These reagents are cell permeable, non-cytotoxic, they're photostable, and they give you images like this. You're looking at tubulin yellow, you're looking at actin red, you're looking at nuclear blue. That's imaged with an RCM2 with a 40X 1.4 numerical aperture objective. I'll play it again because if you look at the resolution, it's 170 without, that's raw data. With deconvolution, it's 120 nanometers. I'll play it again because I think this is worth showing. These are human umbilical endothelial cells. These are normal cells. But if you're like me, you're seeing live cell biology in a way that makes you appreciate your cell biology in new ways. Look at the tubulin. Look at the movement. Look at the nuclear. Yes, I am very proud of the team, Confocal. So... What can we do with fluorobodies? Remember, they're inherently fluorescent. There's no FC region. They're small size. They're quantitative. They're reproducible properties, and they can be multiplex. Their advantages replace antibodies at lower cost and consistent batch properties and efficient manufacturing process. They're monovalent. They're not like an antibody, divalent. There's no cross-linking of receptor. And the advantages over for being able to do super resolution microscopy is their small size. They get into small binding sites. Their true quantitation is now possible. One-to-one -one molar ratio of binding site to fluorescent protein means that you can do true quantitation. You can't do that with fluorochrome labeled antibodies. You've got a mixture of binding sites, and it varies depending on batch to batch. So we know a lot about the extracellular domain of HER2, which is where Herceptin binds. We made a lot of antibodies. I was part of abgenics, transgenic mice, therapeutic antibodies. I've been involved in every stage of antibody discovery, including automation and turning it into a much more efficient program using B cells and going directly for the cells producing the target in a way that you could just pick the B cell, drop it in PCR buffer, lysis buffer, and go directly to the genes. I've done all that with people, and we automated it. Domain four is where trastuzumab, Herceptin, binds. Cancer biomarkers ready now. Notice that they all, ERBB2, 
HERBB3, a specific domain, interacts with the HER2 breast cancer. HERBB4 interacts with HER2. There's ways you can do FRET. There's a way you can look at how things are doing combinatorial. There's a lot of ways that we can change breast cancer diagnostics. We're going to drive into Herceptin. Herceptin binds to that region 4. Another antibody called pertusimab binds to N3. Now, what if we could take all cancer immunotherapies and make fluorobodies? That's not a what if. We're going to do it. All we have to do is obtain the proteins, and we can do it using mass spec. All you large pharma companies that have cancer immunotherapies, I'd like you to join me, contact me, provide your reagents. We'll set it up in an open source. We'll show everybody where the epitopes are. We'll create a database. And, yeah, we'll, we'll make it open source in such a way that we can advance the art faster because I believe it's time to move faster. Anti-HER2 red fluorescent protein binding to SKBR3 cells in real time, no wash, is what you're going to see next. You're seeing confocal. You're seeing volcanic red rims. That's Z-sections. It's not like the fixed cells. Notice the sharp image. That's Z-section. It's a time lapse. It's a Z-series. But you're looking at, you don't see this with a Perceptin fluorochrome labeled antibody, you get a lot of non specifics and we have the data to prove it. I'll play that once more because I want to drive home a couple of things. When you add this reagent to the SKBR3 cells, you can see the binding within seconds. In 10 seconds, you can see the binding. Talk to me about our reagents. Our reagents are changing cancer diagnostics. I'm going to describe something, and I'm going to give you a little background. Exosomes come from cells. They're little extra vesicular membranes, but they range in size, and we know them to be part of nanoscale communication, and they go all the way up to size of oncosomes. Now, what if you could image that in real time? What if you could see that happening in real time? Look at the white circles, the top and the bottom, and watch an exosome shoot out. Watch an oncosome emerge. We'll play it again. That's live cell biology, everybody. That's what happens inside the cancer patient. It goes directly into the blood. So... With confocal, we can look at really thick specimens like a mouse blastocyst. I'm going to show you an Alexafluor 48 stand, strained, stained transcription factor. Um, it marks the primitive ectoderm, remember green. Uh, Trifectoderm, remember blue. I'm sorry, remember red. And then nuclear staining, remember blue. Those are nuclei. You're seeing the different colors because of the blending of red and blue. You're seeing green. Those are nuclei. We're sectioning through. That's the power of confocal. And then the power of 170 nanometer resolution allows you to drill down and look for your targets. A lot of things you can do with this technology. Cyvista. So imagine taking your Flora body docking and looking at that binding to HER2 or ERBB2. We're doing that. Now imagine taking cell biology and looking at cell biology through virtual reality headsets. We're doing that also. There's a lot of things we're doing. If you're interested in new ways of looking at very important biological events, talk to me. This is just the screen from how we're turning the blastocyst into virtual reality. And so our business model to advance, it's really a business model of razor, razor blade, reagents, instruments, but also disposable cartridges, point of care device. And yeah, we have to pay attention to FDA regulations within the box. So our floor bodies, 
think of a reagent that takes you all the way from in vitro and ex vivo to preclinical to clinical. We have that reagents. We're looking at things all the way through the important pathway to humans. So we're patient focused. We're looking at things from a biomarker and therapeutic screening program. We believe it's important and everybody believes it's important to get closer to the patient. And one way to do that is take the biopsy, turn it into tumoroids, and then turn that into a live dead assay and therapeutic screening and optimize immunotherapy. All the capabilities to do that can be done now. There's no reason to wait. We know how to do all these steps. We can detect biomarkers in blood. We can create high throughput screening platforms. The stand, we can do microarrays. We can do nanorays. But imagine we can do something that runs 24 7. It's completely automated, and you just put in a vial of blood. We know how to build that. Point of care, Hemix Health. If you're interested, talk to me. So I'd like to encourage you to visit our website. San Diego Biotech is going to rapidly become an advanced cancer diagnostics and therapeutics company. Why? Because the company has the, an amazing team. Uh, we have a group of investors that are aligning to pull money together. We have financial advisors that are aligned with the mission of turning Sandia Biotech into something that can make a huge difference. If you believe in the goal of achieving cancer detection in years zero to one, talk to me, come visit sandiabio.com. But most importantly, let me know how we can work together because we are dedicated to that mission. Remember, hashtag, nothing will stop us. That's the National Cancer Institute. My team, Nothing will stop them. So we're eliminating disease, nature inspired. Special thanks to Janet Pina and Adrian Rubio and to the entire family that we have assembled for this mission. Thank you. Wonderful, brilliant presentation, Dr. Steve. I really appreciate your time this afternoon. And there are some, um, understandably, a couple questions from the audience. I'll start with the first one uh, from Clayton from Rapid Novar, uh, he's saying, incredible technology, Dr. Miller. The images are incredible. Are there any limitations on which antibodies this can be applied to? No, all we need is a single chain variable fragment, specifically a variable light and variable heavy chain. That's it. So, with our antibodies, you know, we have variable heavy, we call them nanobodies. We have sharks, we have camelids. Anything that is a molecular recognition element can be turned into a flora body, and I'm not kidding. Okay. Wonderful, wonderful. And uh, Miss Kathleen Molnar has a follow-up to his question. She's saying, do you have the flora a bodies validated for different techniques like Western bloat, alpha screen, etc. Well, you know, um, that's a really good question, but I would encourage the people that really want to explore that. We validated them with immunofluorescence. You're seeing binding in real time, no wash conditions for flow cytometry, immunophenotyping, confocal microscopy. My reagents behave better than any fluorochrome labeled antibody, and I'm not saying that my reagents, I'm saying Sandia Biotech, and I'm incredibly proud of these reagents. Try them for whatever application you're interested in, Wester blotting. Um, oh, imagine that you can do gel shifts in real time, and you can turn it into an immunodiagnostic technology by just looking at a real time flora body interacting with a cancer biomarker target. Don't imagine that, we're doing it. Wonderful, and um, um, any comments or questions from the chair, Dr. Karen? Yeah, I mean, I wanted to echo what Sam said, Steve, brilliant presentation. Uh, you had me the whole way through, just waiting to see what was coming next. Uh, and I guess a question oh from my, my perspective. <laughs> um, are you interested in, in non-oncology areas? Uh, to collaborate? Well, the answer. 
There are so many areas that we can do this technology. Uh, think of a floral body as an immunodiagnostics. Why are we focused on cancer? Um, I happen to have lost a really good friend from uh, colon cancer. His name was Mike. I was born this November 10th, uh, 1954. He was born December 11th, 1954. Um, we grew up together. Mike and I uh, were at my sister's wedding, and we were watching um, a golf course, uh, beautiful green, and tornadoes were coming in. And Mike and I had a conversation around colonoscopy, and I said, Mike, you need to get one. And the simple story is he didn't, and Mike passed away. December 24th, last year. I will tell you something exciting about Mike. Uh, the tornado did hit and we all went downstairs and sit in golf courts. Um, but if you remember around December 21st, there was something called the Grand Convergence, uh, Jupiter and Saturn aligning. Here in Santa Fe, there was a bright star right out my sunroom, and my wife and I got to watch it. And if you go to YouTube, you can see the Grand Convergence and see the bright convergence of Saturn and Jupiter. Why am I sharing that? Because I asked Mike to stick around for the Grand Convergence, and he did. And he and I talked, and he celebrated a birthday. So if you ask me why I am so passionate around cancer, it's really simple. I choose to make a difference. I choose to do what I'm doing. I choose to lead a team that will bring technologies to market in record time and not be limited in any way because there are no barriers in my mission. There are none. I choose that and I know what we can do. Thank you. Thanks. Beautiful. And just a personal question from my end, Dr. Steve. Um, the name Sandia, I'm just wondering where that comes from. Uh, I think Tony Peno, the original CEO, and uh, I think Adrian Rubio, um, our VP of Manufacturing and Production, they might be responsible for that, but that is a story that I do not know. And if you remember Paul Harvey, he always left you off with the rest of the story. <laughs> All right. Absolutely. And um, I heard from a couple of audience members that, you know, your group definitely has a good view in uh, New Mexico with the lots of nature. <laughs> So, yeah, I live at 7,500 feet. And, uh, oh, wow. Mountain Lodge show us the view. is uh, an incredible. Yeah. So, okay. You want a view? I'll show you a little bit. Um, there you go. You're looking at my uh, exercise bike, but uh, the mountains way out there are Sandia Mountains, way out there. Wow. <laughs> If you go to my uh, LinkedIn site, there's uh, Sandia Biotech LinkedIn site. You can download a Pintro deck. Uh, the very second slide will show you a picture from my business office, and you will be amazed. Show it's that. worth it. Download that deck. Share that deck. Promote us. Show that. Oh, Diane, my wife just said, show you this. So I will. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. This is, uh, Amazing. Out the and uh, we have deer that walk by. We uh, and uh, yes, we are blessed, and we know it. And uh, when you're aligned with purpose, and you cannot be stopped, wow! What if the universe actually aligns with you and says, "I'll open all doors"? What if it really works that way? Oh my God! I forgot to tell you, it does. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, that's enough of that. <laughs> Well, any other if you questions? Wonder why I'm so happy, if you wonder why I'm so happy, I will show you one secret. The glass. Okay. Okay. That was Paul Marley. All right. That's tea, green tea. <laughs> great. Great. And, Thank you, um, guys. I do appreciate it's a pleasure that. to uh, share with you. And please follow Sandia Biotech, LinkedIn, Steve Miller on Target, LinkedIn, SandiaBio.com website.
join us. We have a mission, and I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you, Steve. Thank you so much. And uh, I guess we will be heading to our final presentation, this uh, beautiful summit. And um, the next one will be um, from a very great fellow from Sinjin about enabling data-driven drug discovery. So let's...